All right, I think we have a game. Uh, let's see if my opponent actually plays a move. All right. So today is very exciting because we're gonna try something new. We're gonna try uh, teaching, like teaching Go? I don't know if we're teaching anything here. We're gonna try playing Go while also focusing our attention on something else on hand. And today's topic is sake. And some of you may know, uh, I suspect most of you don't actually, but some of you may know, I really love sake. Like for me, um, I don't eat it, I don't drink it with just with Japanese food. It is, for me, it's a, it's a drink all to itself. It's, it's a much better late night drink than a lot of other alcohols. Uh, it doesn't have any sulfites, it's very low in acidity. Um, so it just agrees with my digestive system a lot more. Like if I drink a couple beers, like I'm gonna feel that the next day um, in a couple different ways. Uh, you know, <laughs> wine is better, but, but still not as clean. And I can drink quite a bit of sake and have a very nice, like, especially if it's a good sake, um, clean drinking experience, not feel, uh, feel less of a hangover, feel less of those sort of crud effects. Uh, you know, we can also talk about beer farts being what they are. Um, so anyway, so yeah, today we're going to drink some sake and we're going to talk about sakes. I've got my sake collection here on standby, so we'll be going through this tonight. Uh, here's what we're drinking. We're actually trying to finish this bottle. This is a Muramura. Oh, and my green screen is going to do really weird things to this label. So like the label is kind of of a turquoisey green here. Um, and this is a Jinmai Ginjo sake, which by the end of this video, I'm really hoping that uh, you'll all know what that means and you'll know something about sake and you can actually go and order a sake and know kind of know what you're doing because it really is intimidating it's really really uh kind of terrible um as an american trying to drink sake like we just do not have a culture for it and the only place that serves it is actually like sushi restaurants so mm. now here i'll start with a couple things uh should we talk about go at all <laughs> like uh, I kind of want to, let me, let me think a little bit about this one. Uh, let's see, I kind of want to play this one given Black's interested development here, but normal is also good. I think, oh man, three, really four. Well, this is kind of a trick one. Uh, I like this one here. I feel like I want to just dive in the corner and take these points and give up the outside, but, uh, okay. Do what's in your heart. Do what's in your heart. Okay. Uh, oh, God damn it. Stop playing moves. I want to talk about sake. Uh, can I play this one first? I sure can. Let's just do it. And I don't know. <laughs> I'm so much more motivated to talk about sake than go right now. It's really, it's really going to be bad for this game. I'm really glad this is a sandbagger game. Um, for those of you who don't know what a sandbagger game is, uh, it's just kind of playing its opponent's below your level without them necessarily knowing that you know what your level is this is way over concentrated for him right like if i can live easily here oh, he's going to attack this though so he's, he can still profit but this is not a good like black is not happy about this shape um do the question is do i need to play another move after this exchange and if i can play the next move over here i'm in really good shape and do, 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 it looks, it feels kind of co-ish. He's going to let me keep on crawling. As it is. Uh, let me read a little bit, uh, and then we'll go back to talking about sake. I promise, I promise we're going to talk most of this time about sake. Like, have no fear. That's happening. All right, we're totally good totally good so let's just play a nice high move over here okay um so this is a pretty nice this is actually i believe this one is brewed in the united states um which or at least the yeah basically it is um uh i believe the rice is grown in california and this is actually out of oregon i think um this is one of i can't even find the actual label here that oh yeah so so bottled by uh forest the it says Muramura, which I think is a subdivision of another company called Sake One, which is in For Forest Grove, Oregon. Um, so if you're drinking a quote-unquote American sake, is often, uh, especially if you're on the West Coast, they're all coming out of this one place in Oregon. It is sort of like your sake mecca, which I really want to go visit. But um, yeah, that's another story. Anyway, I, I said there were these Japanese words here that you need to know. This is a fairly nice bottle of sake. 
I don't, this isn't my favorite for the money. Like I, like we're going to, I'll go through all my recommendations here. I've got my nice little bottle collection over here. Not my favorite for the money, but I am very happy with this. Um, I'm not super happy with this because I've had in the sense that it hasn't, uh, it, it's degraded a little bit in quality as I've opened it. Um, the day I opened it, it was fantastic. And this is probably mm, not quite two weeks old. Um, and there are people who say, oh yeah, you just refrigerate your sake and it doesn't, it doesn't really go bad. You know, it doesn't have a problem like wine. Do I need to do anything? No, that's four in a row. Okay, so my opponent's having a bad game. That's what we've learned here. Let's just play here. This would also be big over here by like the top. Um, for me, yeah, most bottles of sake, I do, I do find there's a pretty significant drop off after you open it. Um, that first 24 hours, man, really enjoy your bottles. If you can get a bottle and share it with some friends, that's a, that's a great idea. Uh, this is the river one, which is, well, I'll we'll talk about more things. They're, they're different types of sake. Um, but on the back, you can see they have this little helpful label. It's really not that helpful. Um, they have premium quality versus low quality, and this is somewhat subjective. Um, but it does have some words that you definitely need to know if you're going to be drinking sake. And I, I, I might even playing that. Mm, I guess we just come back and play over here. Let's just play a big one. All right. Uh, so on the low quality, it doesn't have a name. It just says sake usually served hot okay yeah often you don't really um you don't off like like in the i think it was really in like the 70s sake in the united states got this op a reputation as a hot booze and part of the reason and, and it's true like like yeah in japanese and especially in like winter months cold certain seasons it's really nice to have a glass of like warm booze and sake actually lends itself very well to being heated and in the 70s, in the United States, when sake was sort of being more important, discovered, that's how it was marketed only. Like, it was like, oh, this is, a, this is like a booze you can drink when it's cold outside. And so it had this reputation for only being uh, drank while, you know, while it's warmed up. And that's totally not the case. Most sake is not drank that way, actually. Uh, but you still can, and often you find more of the lower quality sakes qualify for, for doing um, that. Let's just take a corner. We'll see what he wants to follow up here with. Uh, anyway. After sake, they say Junmai, Ginjo, Junmai Ginjo, and Dai Ginjo. And hence, there, there are these actually two different scales happening here. And there's a whole other scale, basically the non-Junmais. This is the Junmai scale uh, that we also have to talk about. Um, but Junmai, what it means is this, this sake, any sake that's a Junmai, is basically made with the, uh, the yeast, the rice, and water. And that's it. Like, it's, it's you know, if you want to think of it as pure sake, go right ahead and call it that. Uh, and so the Japanese word for that is Junmai. It also tends to promise, and I think it's like a legally protected term in Japan. Um, it's one of those things like you have like your, your European cheeses and, and things that are terms. For, some, for them to call something Junmai, uh, it also has to be milled, the rice that is, the rice grains themselves have to be milled to 70%, meaning they have to, they have to throw away like the cruddiest 30% of the rice. Um, and I've got a web page open I've got a, uh, to, to show you exactly what I mean, because that's kind of a big deal when it comes to sake making. Uh, what's going on here? He wants to fight a ko. This is ko, right? Uh, I should be doing more thinking about the game. I don't really need a ko, actually. If I let him live, I'm going to get just kill this stone out here. All right. <clears throat> we won't make this too complicated. Oh, stop playing moves. I need to talk. Look at my timer. You jerk. No, oh, stop it. <laughs> Fine. He probably has to just kill the stone, and actually, that's probably good for him. Just double honey here. So, anyway, uh, on this Junmai scale, uh, I have to think about this a little bit. Not really, just connect, right? Could take here and let him go that way. And let's just take that. Anyway, on this Junmai scale, uh, the rice has to be milled to 70%, like I was saying. And so, here, let's, uh, let's open up some pages. I think. There we go. The reason sake rice is polished. Check this out. Normally you have brown rice, right? This is the rice. And this is at, like rice actually has a shell, right? This is after it's been deshelled. Uh, and then you have the bran still surrounding the rice. So that's where like a lot of your fats and uh, vitamins are. Uh, and if you get ordered that at a restaurant, it's called brown rice. And so like people say it's healthier for you because again, it has those extra nutrients. Um, and yeah, if you're, if you're just eating rice and that's like your meal, you want to eat brown rice. Brown rice is actually better for you. However, if you're just looking for calories and just and just like pure starchy, you know, the core of the rice, you actually want to get this brown rice off. And that's where you get white rice. And everyone loves white rice, right? It's such a neutral, nice flavor. Let's go back to this game. Okay, we're just all being peaceful. 
that's fine. Web. Uh, and so white, normal white rice that you eat is probably milled to like 90-ish percent, plus or minus 5%. That's like white rice. We just basically just get rid of the brown stuff, the, the, all, the, all the extra fat, vitamins, oils, and just get it to the rice. Well, junmai uh, is milled to 70%, which means you're, you're, you're even getting more of that stuff off, right? You're just guaranteeing there's less of that in your sake. And that means that uh, if you were just make sake out of like regular rice, like that you'd eat at a table, um, it would actually taste kind of foul. Like it would just have a lot of like weird off flavors. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a very distilled, um, you know, succinct flavor with lots of subtleties. It would just have lots of things in it being thrown at you. Uh, and so that's Junmai. Junmai, uh, a lot of cheap sake is, and I do have one other one here that's not even Junmai quality. It's below Junmai quality. We'll bring out here. Um, I think that was only milled to like 80, some 80%. Um, so it still has a lot of that. We'll say, we'll say for the purposes of sake, the garbage still on the rice. Um, it's not a very accurate term because that stuff is actually really nutritious in any other dietary context. Where am I going here? I gotta open this up. All right, so he lived, that's great. Uh, this Putting this here feels real bad. That feels much too narrow. Um, I can kick this and just attack it. That doesn't feel bad at all. Uh, okay, at some point I do wanna play in here to threaten this is the goal. Um, okay, so we have this Genmai scale where we're just making sake with just rice, and Genmai also promises at least 70% milling. And so that's where it's kind of confused. Like, it's a word that kind of means two different things. Uh, yes, we're going to have a lot of those today. Uh, okay, after Genmai quality, we go up to Ginjo quality, which we're going to mill off another 10%, right? So we're just improving those rice kernels, really just getting more of the starch of them. And that's what this is, right? It's Genmai Ginjo. It's just rice. And it's been milled, like just throw away the worst 40% of the rice, right? Just off the top. Uh, as you go up in quality, the sake gets more expensive. Partially, mainly, maybe even not partially, but mainly because you're just throwing away more and more of your raw material that you're using to make it. So keep that in mind. Okay, whoops, where's my, I can't remember which one's tied Uh That's a move, you can play that. Let's just keep pressure on and just take a 40 point bottom because that's a thing we can do right now. After uh, Ginjo, they have Dai Ginjo. And I like Dai Ginjo. I, don't, I think Dai Ginjo is great. And in, in, uh, in general, uh, it has to be milled to at least 50%, but a lot of Dai Ginjos go all the way down to like 35%, where you're throwing away just two thirds of your raw material, right? Um, you know, you know if, if I, I know we're in the United States, we, we're used to just throwing stuff away, but just any industry where you're just taking two thirds of whatever you're doing and throwing it away. Uh, it's, you know, it's not going to be a profitable thing unless you're selling it for very high pri prices, which Daiginjo usually is. And I have an example here of a very, uh, not uh, one of the cheapest, we'll say nice Daiginjos that you can buy, at least easily find, um, as well as a Daiginjo that I found that I've never, I don't, I don't believe it's Daiginjo. It's that cheap. And so I'm going to have a real hard question. I haven't tried it yet. I don't actually know if it tastes like Daiginjo or not. All right. He's just trying to find some sort of shape here. We don't really care. Uh, let's show, actually, let's show you the Daiginjo now. Usually I would save this for the end because, you know, it's Daiginjo. This is like what you, what you spend your big money on. This one comes in a box. Uh, a good bottle of Daiginjo usually costs, starts at $30 and goes way up. Uh, this one, this one you can find kind of on sale in the U.S. for like $20. And this is, this is an actually imported Daiginjo. It's basically the cheapest, like I said, nice of, of the, of the non-sketchy Daiginjos you can find. I haven't even opened this. This is Hakutsuru, which is uh, imported again by, I think it's also imported by Sake One. Like again, all these things are just sort of going through this one thing in Oregon, this one-stop shop for Sake. Because um, again, the market just isn't big enough to really warrant having so these huge distributors all over the place. Um, should I just not let him have a base? That seems smart, right? Let's just do that. I have, I have all this outside. He just has to float and run and I can just poke at it forever. All right, I was getting a Daiginjo bottle out. Uh, I've only drank a few of these. Again, most of the sake I'm gonna show you are less than $20 a bottle. Uh, in terms of alcohol content, it's just, they're usually slightly more alcoholic than wine, but that's kind of on par, right? Um, a lot of people call sake rice wine. Um, it's actually, in terms of brewing process, it's actually close, more closer to beer. Um, but the, you know, it, because it's more alcoholic than beer, it's not really, you know, you can't really drink it like beer. I mean, you can, and I have, those are fun nights. 
Um, but yeah, we're not gonna talk about that because we're talking about Daiginjo. Again, how's it show? This one kind of shows up in the camera. There you go, Junma. It says also Junma Daiginjo, right? It specifies both. I'm not sure if that label shows up at all. Probably not. What should I do here? This seems like a nice poke. Uh, this, yeah, again, a lot of the sake companies in Japan <clears throat> have been brewing for hundreds or occasionally like thousands of years. Um, there is a long history. Uh, of course, I think, I think the, like this, the most rec- the sake that would resemble, most closely resembles modern sake without, um, well, here, there's a weird, there's a bunch of weird things about how sake was made. Like for a while they like had like virginal girls like chewing the rice before they would then brew it. Um, like there's some, there's some weird shit like that going on, but anyway, uh, we'll skip that part because I'm not as familiar with the actual full on history of sake, which is very rich. And I have to worry about, uh, what my next move is. And I really don't know right now. Like I really don't, um, this shape point, he's going to have fun poking it. And I just kind of feel like I should protect it before anything bad happens. He kind of just gets a free move there. So let's just play it. I don't don't have to worry about it. Okay. But down here. We also have some sake meters and a lot of the, the sakes, oh, there you go, imported by Sake One, Forest Grove, Oregon, um, will be will exist on two uh, axes, I guess, although right now they're on the same axis, so that doesn't really make sense. Um, but you have sweet to dry sake and you have light to full bodied. Uh, and this one is very dry and full body, bodied, which I don't entirely agree with. I think this is actually a fairly light sake. And maybe this is because I don't drink a lot of Daiginjos. Um, but you know, the sake is so pure. I describe that one, especially you're just drinking it just, just nicely chilled, fresh out of the bottle. It's like drinking magic fairy water, right? It's, it's like the alcohol that is closest to drinking really nice water. (laughs) And that might sound really boring to you. Um, but everybody likes water, right? Like how, like, it doesn't that just sound amazing. Um, I'm not really drinking this one fast enough, by the way. (laughs) Not drinking that one at all. Hmm. Uh, okay, he's just poking stuff. He's actually not getting eye shape yet. He's just not even really taking free stuff. He's just, I don't know what he's doing. All right, so that's Daiginjo. Yeah, this this uh, sake company says since 1743, which I believe is still when the virginal, supposedly attractive young women were like chewing the rice before they would make sake out of it. Uh, we'll leave that over there for now. I don't think they're still doing that. I don't think that's the practice. Um, but anyway, you have these sake meters. Uh, this one, they only have one. This is more on the dry side. Uh, this, the Muramura sakes, which again, I think are, for me, they're overpriced what they are. I'm going to give you like my, my quote unquote budget quality recommendation. And it's still not that budget, but um, here we go. We have the uh, Jinmai Ginjo but Canyon. This is the same Muramura, but if we look here, it's just a tad bit drier. Uh, I actually haven't, I, I, I bought these three fairly recently just as a set and I haven't tried them all. Um, mainly because the last time I had a Muramura bottle, it wasn't, it was, it was actually a Nagori sake, which we'll also have to talk about again, lots of sake terms. And I thought it was just overpriced. Like I was like, this is not worth, like this is $16 a bottle or something. And it's, it's, you can get better sake for cheaper. Was my feeling. I'm sure there's a sake expert out there who can tell me why you can justify a $16 price for these. Um, but they're fine. Like, like I think, I think these are, especially if you open them today, you'll have a very nice time with, with one of these. And again, the U.S. we don't have a lot of choices wherever you go. So, if you're looking to try sake and you can splurge and buy a $16 bottle, hey, this is not a bad choice. It's not my top choice, but you get the point. He's attacking me. Uh, this seems like a really bad idea for him. Like this could go really wrong. He has a weak group over here. You don't go fishing when your house is on fire. He just went fishing. How am I doing on time? Oh, I got out of six minutes. Okay. Uh, that's that. I was going to say something. Oh, I was going to go to a web page. Oh my God. Look how loose this is. Ah, but unfortunately now I have to figure out like these ladders and where to cut him like this into this feels like the natural way, right? Nope. Then it's just laddered. He can ladder that. And I just cut that off. So I can just kill that stone basically if I want cut this one into this one. Is that any better? That is a lot better. Let's just play that. Let's just assume that this works and not worry about it too much because, you know, hmm, we're enjoying some nice sake. Now, let's say you are living in the part of the US that doesn't have, you know, a giant liquor store that has a huge sake selection 
or you're just going you're just going to like your your mom and pop you know packy for those of you on the east coast you might know what that means anywhere else you probably don't and uh you, you go down to your packy and you're just like i want some sake they're probably gonna steer you to a bottle that looks something like this and i think this is one of the first bottles i ever had a sake and this was like many years ago um and i bought one last year just to see if like how close it was to my memory of it this is not good sake <laughs> like like but if you just want to if you just want to know like is sake like possible for you like you don't care if it's good or not you just want to like you've never had sake you don't know what it is sure get this bottle this is not even junmai quality right this is below junmai quality um uh this one says herbaceous and i would agree with that yes it's 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 got a lot of funk in it there's a lot of little i mean it's still sake like you're drinking sake but it's definitely not this magic fairy water experience that Dai, you know a nice bottle of daiginjo would give you uh okay oh so he's gonna run that way all right so we can do this maybe we push once here and then just back off or push one here and lean something like this probably push and lean is probably better uh there are two really um important in, in my own in my own uh coming of age of sake i guess or at least developing a taste for sake there are two really important events uh for me um one of which was one of which was fairly recently within the last two years um, but the first one was when I first moved to Seattle, and at the time, I don't believe it's there anymore, which is unfortunate, or it got blended in with something else. In Pioneer Square, there was, <clears throat> oh, interesting, I think I cover here, I don't really mind this honey, this honey helps me, but he gets this peep, and I don't like the peep. <laughs> uh, but, I, but if he peeps, then I can attack, okay, all right, we're good. Uh, there's, a, there's a sake bar in Pioneer Square, and all they had was sake, and I think I think it turned into a place that offered more than sake, but I'm not, I haven't, I don't know. I don't really go to Pioneer Square anymore. Um, And I just moved here and was just like, hey, sake seems cool. Let's try it. And and I just went up to the, I don't even call them a bar keep or whatever. I don't know, whatever they call people at a sake bar. Um, I really should decide what to do about this group. This feels like we just push again. Uh, and I said, I knew nothing, just teach me something. And he's like, ah, I've got something for you. And he gave me, he, he said, this is something that just impresses everyone. And I go, okay, I, I'm not going to be hard to impress, but sure. And pour me this glass of sake. He said, just taste it. And he said, what does it taste like? And I taste it and I said, bananas. Like it literally tasted like bananas to me. Like that was, he's like, yes. And I was like, I don't understand. He said, this is just rice, right? The different, the actual flavors that you can bring out of rice uh, is amazing. Like you can get melon, you can get banana, you can get uh, again more earthy tones. You can get more um, almost almost like like woody uh, cinnamons. Like like there's a lot of little subtle flavor compounds. Do I play this one? I think I just play this one. Keep them separated. Oh, but this one it's kind of similar. Okay, uh, I think we're still good. Um, okay, so he's pretty committing to that. Let's honey over here. Um, and double honey, I think I get, I lose the opportunity to do this move. I do need to think about this game at some point, especially since I have a weak group now. All right. And he said, yes, like just within the grain of rice, there's all these other flavors and the sake maker, right, is the one who can unlock them all. I was like, whoa, that's cool. But then I didn't drink sake again. I just kind of forgot about it. Uh, and then again, two years ago, I went to this, I wasn't even, I wasn't even, it wasn't even a Japanese place, but it was a Thai restaurant that had a sake flight. And I was like, oh yeah, sake, that's a cool thing. I had that once. I wonder, you know, what it's like. And I just got a, a flight of sake and I was just, they were all, I think there were four and they were all so different. Uh, like each one, each one really was a different experience. That's impressive. You know, I mean, beer is too, right? You can order four different beers and just be like, whoa, this IPA is way different than a stout. Whoa, who would have thought? Sake is the same way. Um, but there's one I really liked. It was called Mirror of Truth. And it was just a Genmai. It wasn't even Genmai Ginjo, but it was, you know, an imported um, uh, Japanese sake that uh, apparently is is a fairly well, you know, is a fairly well-regarded and well-known sake. Um, imported, it costs, it was pretty pricey. It was like $30 a bottle, um, which... You know, if you're thinking, oh, $30 a bottle, that's not much because, you know, I paid $100 for a bottle of scotch or something. But, I mean, I don't know. These are, I'm, I'm still viewing this with the non-serious, like, I, yeah, like, 
to enjoy a hundred dollar bottle of scotch, scotch, you kind of have to know something about scotch, right? And I'm not at that level, or what well, certainly wasn't at that level at that time with with sake. Uh, what should I do here, guys? <laughs> what this this got really messy. This uh, I don't know. This might have been better for him than I thought. Like I'm not really in trouble, but I'm just annoyed that I have to think. I think that's my problem. I think I just hane and then I cover here and then we just make shape because I can make shape here and here and we're just we're fine. Uh, anyway, I had this and I was like, whoa, this this is really good. And so I want to search for that you know mirror of truth. And I went to a bunch of different stores in the Seattle area and called a bunch of places until I found one that had it. Uh, but in the meantime, I picked up a bunch of other bottles of sake just to try along the way. I was like, oh, this one looks cool. And so that's kind of how it developed, right? It was, it was, you know, you just have that one glass. And I think a lot of people who like wine have the same thing, right? They have one glass of wine that's like, oh, wine is something beyond what I thought it was. And, you know, you never forget that glass. And I think for me, again, the same thing was true for sake. Uh, this is honey. We can honey here. Okay. So that that's, I don't even know what we were on. We're on sake. So let's go back to this page. Here, if you're just looking to buy a sake, just go buy this one, pay your $6, and bring it home, try it with a friend, and have a good time. Uh, and if you're like, this this was an interesting drink, I'm curious, go out and sell, go out, buy it, find a nicer sake to buy. Uh, so we did that. Oh, here, we can actually show you what the rice grains kind of look like. These pictures are kind of small. Uh, but you can see, you know, brown rice, ginjo, daiginjo, and then even more expensive daiginjo. All right, are we still playing this game? We are. Okay. Let's keep focused on that. Uh, also, let's maybe take a second. Oh, am I going to run out of time? Ah. Hmm. All right, you know what that means. We need to pour more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kampai. Okay. Uh, now what? We have an eye. Uh, kind of just... Uh, I don't know what I want here. I just don't know what I want. This is kind of a move. This is kind of a dirty move. Let's just try it. That should make him think for at least a little while, right? That buys me some time. That's all I really want. Okay, let's talk about uh, Nagori Saki, which often is also Jinmai. <laughs> so we're still kind of theoretically in Jinmai territory, although this one I don't think is. It doesn't say Jinmai anywhere. Um, this is another famous, if I say famous, and like it's, it's a type of sake that people might be familiar with. Oh, this is really doing weird things to my green screen. It is a pretty clear milky bottle. Um, this one actually has, this is an unfiltered sake, so a lot of the actual rice, uh, koji, is actually still left in here. So if you, probably, oh, actually it kind of looks more solid. Actually, the green screen actually is really interesting because it, it goes right through the rest of the bottle and then you can see the rice really well, even though the bottle is actually kind of opaque and actually hard to see that. The green screen really <laughs> brings that out. Here, let's see if we shake it up. Let's see what happens. There you go, pretty solid. There you go. All those, all that, that rice particles... Um, just kind of, can I play this? I assumed I could play this before because then Over he can play this. That's his place. I'm not really intending for these two stones to live. I'm just looking for free stuff here and here. Um, anyway, it says creme, creme de sake. Uh, and Nagori, I think it's a Japanese word that means clouds. Someone out there can tell me, please. Um, this one's also 15% alcohol by volume. So again, just a round wine or maybe slightly more. Uh, this is definitely refrigerated after opening. Uh, is this anything interesting here? It doesn't matter. Anyway, Nagori sake, I don't drink that much of it because it tends to be very sweet sake. This is often like a dessert sake. And they market it often, and I'll say this because I think they're being sexist, this is often much more marketed to like women. <laughs> uh, good luck with that. I mean, anyone can drink it. Um, culturally, sake in Japan is not a hip drink right now. Like, and, and companies are kind of struggling with that, um, that problem. Yeah, I need to go all the way back there, which means if I get strong here, I can actually run the stone this way. If I just get a little bit more strength. Um, so, so sake is very much like an old man's drink, and that way it actually has a lot in common with go. Uh, go in Japan, at least being an old man's kind of game. 
Um, sake does have a place in a lot of ceremonies, like in weddings or, you know, other like, you know, I don't know, when people win awards or get recognized for something like sake is, a, is still a traditional drink. <clears throat> but in terms of actual like people drinking it regularly, it's really kind of fallen out of favor. Like sake is not fashionable right now in Japan. It's becoming more fashionable than the rest of the world, but very slowly and really only Nine, through Japanese food eight, and cuisine. Seven, God, I have to play a move here? Five, I don't want to play a move here. <laughs> so anyway, a lot of uh, the actual Japanese companies, in order to try to increase their sales and appeal to people who aren't old Japanese men, um, they've started doing more sparkling sakes and more flavored sakes. And oh God, I had this, I think it was it melon. It was like artificial, I can't remember the flavor. It was like the word, it was just awful. Like it, I really just, I don't know what I want to do. Um, I can't even remember the flavoring. Uh, I couldn't finish the bottle, I gave it away. Like I had I, I had a glass and I was like, okay, that's awful. I waited a couple days and I then I got brave enough to try it again because I was like, it couldn't have been that bad. And it was, it was just the, you know, see, turn there for me anyway. Uh, I don't think I have any reason to throw in. Nope. So let's just play that. Uh, now the question is, do, 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 do. So he can't actually poke out this eye, right? Oh, he totally can poke out this eye. Uh, or Kenny, not really. All right, let's try to be smart this time. I feel like I can just play here. He's got to watch his liberties pretty carefully. Uh, I mean, they're trying these things like flavors and sparkling things to have them appeal, especially to, to women and young women. Um, and yeah, just increase sales and other demographics because the old man demographic is dying. Uh, so anyway, that's Nagori Sake. If, if you like sweet, almost kind of creamy uh, alcohols, which I'm trying to think, what would that be? The equivalent of, I don't know if we have, what's a good equivalent of like a sweet and slightly creamy Maybe like if you're doing like an Irish coffee or something, but with Irish, I don't know. Uh, you know, you can check out Nagori Sakis. Um, they're not uh, sakes. Yeah, not sake, sake is a better pronunciation. Uh, how do I fix this? I really don't even want to fix this. I just want to mess with stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty brutal. After this, this cut gets really bad. All right, let's just assume I'm fine. Uh, yeah, what were we talking about? We were having a good time, weren't we? <laughs> uh, oh, here, let's go back to this web page. Oh, he's playing moves again. Why is he doing that? All right, let's just kill that. <laughs> uh, over here, this also shows you all the process that sake goes through. When you make wine, uh, it's said that you know, 80% of the quality of the wine you're making comes from the grape, right? And so vineyards will remember what years were the good years and what years were the bad years. In sake, it's the opposite, where 80% of the quality comes from the hand of the maker. And it's only 20% of the, is really the quality of the rice. And that's why you can get this huge, diverse world of sakes. I know I've only talked about like Jinmai sake so far, uh, but there's so much more than that. Um, by the way, you get your, your brown rice. Oh, is it my turn? What did he do? Oh, fine. Be fast. Uh, brown rice, go into white rice, right? You mill it, uh, then you steam it, and then you get it into koji, which is you add the yeast, yeast, and it sort of breaks it down, like the starches go into sugars. Uh, I don't know what that word is, but you add more. Oh, this is this is the stage where you get like the sugars to get to transform into alcohols. And again, that's called, uh, or that I guess that that mash becomes moromi. Um, I'm not sure the Japanese translations for all these things. Eventually, you get um, your rice pulp, which would stay in in a nigori. Uh, and that would give you raw sake, which again, I'll show you here in a moment, or maybe not. Uh, he's really like doing stuff. Maybe I should think about the game. No, definitely not. Um, so we get some of that, that rice, like a nagori sake. Uh -huh. I'm really black right now. I have a black background. My green screen's freaking out. Um, and then you get this raw sake, then you have to pasteurize it or you don't, and that's where it gets fun. Because <laughs> then you don't, well, maybe not fun, but it's slightly optional. Uh, what do I do here? I just dirt, 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 dirt. Nine, eight, I think seven, I just pull back, right? Six, five, yeah, no problem. 
no problem. Uh, and so, uh, sometimes it's called draft sake. So here's a little bottle of one of these. I don't drink a lot of these either. Um, so my experience with draft sake, this is often called nama sake, N-A-M-A, -A, if you're <clears throat> looking at actual Japanese um, to find a draft sake. This is a little bit more alcoholic. Uh, and it does have a different flavor profile than pasteurized sake, just like how raw cheese and raw milk have different flavor profiles and kind of different amounts of funkiness. Uh, you know, than than you know the pasteurized version. Um, I if again if you just want you can find actually like these little draft bottles of sake pretty common throughout the U.S. So if you don't want to go buy the six dollar big bottle of um, Geki Ken, uh, sure buy yourself a little bottle of, of draft sake and that'll also give you a, a nice little sake experience. So it's basically just unpasteurized. This one's actually been pasteurized once. Um, often you pasteurize it twice. Um, they're all nama sakes, but again the different alternatives to pasteurization or how much pasteurization will determine what kind of namasake it is. Uh, is this a move? How? All right, where are the eyes? You can have one there. You can't... I'm not, let's just... I see. You can kind of get to... No. We're just going to keep this group separated and make this group sort of sweat balls here. Uh, so that's namasake. Uh, often you would see, uh, here we're still on Junmai. We have a lot of Junmai. Um, in Japan, the Ozeki one cups are quite famous. You can buy these out of vending machines. Just, uh, and for, well, like when they were kind of hip and cool, I don't know, probably 30 years ago, right? You'd have your Japanese businessman, like buy one of these before he got on the, on the train. Uh, and you'd sip it on your way home from work. Um, this one, however, I just saw this one. This is one cup Daiginjo, and it was 50 cents more than like the non-Daiginjo one, which has me real skeptical because like the non-Daiginjo one has a milling rate of like 80%, and this is Daiginjo, so it's at least throwing half the rice away for only 50 cents more. I have not, I didn't think about this move at all. I'm just playing a shape. Eh, what are you going to do? Let's ask a question. He might co here. Uh, it seems like you might have to code here. Although he, ha oh, he has this, this. Um, I'm a little bit short on liberties on this side, so he doesn't have to. Uh, anyway, I had, I've only had one Ozeki one cup in my life, and it definitely wasn't the Daiginja one. It was kind of awful. Like this is, this is really harsh. Like you, you definitely get the feeling you're drinking alcohol, oh, which I keep forgetting to do. Hold on. Hmm. See, it seems like he's figured out that <laughs> he doesn't actually have to. Uh, Respond here, but that just means I get to take the stone, right? Like, no problem, no problem. We can kind of actually use that to get an eye, though. But then I'm feeling... Uh, actually, I can't attack this stupid thing at this point. No. Here, Atari here. And then I have to connect. Uh, anyway, it's really harsh. It feels like you're tasting alcohol. Um, this one is 16% alcohol. Um, but this one claims to be Daiginjo, and I think it was 350 for 180 milliliters of, of Daiginjo. You do have to get used to, if you're importing or buying the imported sake brands, they tend to be 720 milliliters instead of 750 milliliters, so actually a little bit smaller than a bottle of wine. I hope he's got a plan here, because I don't think he does. Anyway, so I'm excited to try this one. Uh, so what is that? It's not quite, it's like a quarter of a bottle of Daiginjo for $3.50. I've never, I've never seen a bottle of Daiginjo for anything less than $20. And that would be, this would be like a 14 bottle of, $14 bottle of Daiginjo if you did the math out right. So he backed off, which is nice. And I have all ladders, so I don't know, let's just keep going. See what happens. Um, so I'm real skeptical that this is actually Daiginjo. <laughs> I'm scared, guys. I'm really scared, but kind of excited. Uh, all right. Oh, he's pushing this way. This is almost alive. Hey, now, but I'm going to kill this one. So does it matter? Should I just let you live? Nine, eight, I mean, seven, it doesn't feel six, bad five, if I get to kill the bigger one. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, there was a stage here on this chart. It didn't actually say, right? Like, dun, 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 tings. oh, there we go. We didn't get down to uh, dilution because when you actually brew sake, it actually is more alcoholic than, significantly more alcoholic than wine. 
um, by up to like 5%, basically, 5 or 6%. Uh, depending on your type of wine, I guess. And I don't know. Using wine is probably a bad benchmark anyway, since it's such a different beverage. Ooh, that's kind of neat. You can kind of play there, or I can kind of play there, but also kind of not. Um, actually, I totally can. This is fine. You actually have this problem immediately. He needs to cut, like right now. <laughs> like, only move. <laughs> uh, I'm, there's only one move, so I'm not. Yep, okay, thank you. Uh, yep, that's fine. Okay, we're all good. All right, so this is Genshu, and it's also a Jinmai Genjo. Uh, if you go to a, if you go to any place that sells decent sake in the United States, you tend to find a lot of Jinmai Genshos, um, a Ginjo, sorry, Jinmai Genjos, because it is kind of a luxury product. And so, even though in Japan you sell a lot more like non Jinmai, non Genjo, non Dai Genjo sakes, like the cheap stuff, in other words, um, because of you know being imported or, or having a special place here. You tend to find more of the. Exp I'm just gonna play here because this is nothing, and I can't get in trouble. <sighs> what is going on? We're still. Tr Why is he trying to win the game? <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, uh, I don't even think this is like threatening anything. <laughs> Can I just play here? Does this play there? Anyway, if you. Uh, Brew your sake, and then you do not dilute it down to water, down to like 15, 14, 16 percent. It's called Genshu. And so if you drink scotch, and you're familiar with like cask strength scotch, this is kind of like cask strength sake, although it's not at all equivalent because scotch is, so cask strength scotch is like 60 percent alcohol. Um, uh, but, you know, this one, I really like this bottle because it's a nice, it's like a metal bottle, like solid metal. And, I'm, and this, this is really heavy and really firm. It lets you know how drunk you're going to get ahead of time because of how serious it is. Um, I think this is also one of the 720. I don't know if this one's a 750 milliliter model too. Uh, and the nice thing, if you if it <laughs> you probably you can't always use this as a shortcut, but if you want to tell if your sake is is made in the U.S. or if in Japan, just look at the size of the bottle. If it's 750, it's probably made in the U.S. If it's 720, it was probably made in Japan. So there's your fun tip. All right, here we go. Uh, oh, he played a move. Interesting, but that move does nothing. So in conclusion, we just honey. All right, this one. This is actually my top uh, pick recommendation for you guys if you're just looking to to start out in sake. Uh, this is made in the U.S., so it's not. Again, if you're in Europe, I don't know what you guys have. You guys do your own thing. I'm giving you my U.S. Uh, as best as I can recommendation. I don't get any problems here, right? No, nope, no problems. Let's play there. Happy little moves. That doesn't work. I just... You need to think more, sir. Can't be, you know, talking about sake all go game. Uh, Momokawa, again, is one of these one of these Forest Grove, Oregon sub-brands. Uh, I think it's made with California rice, 14.5% alcohol. It is a Jinmai Ginjo and organic rice. And they do have a non-organic version of this, which I've also had. Um, <clears throat> I think they call it Diamond is the uh, equivalent non-organic version. And it's very good. Um, like I actually, I fell in love with the the non-organic version first, and I had this, and I was like, okay, I I'm, I do think this is slightly nicer. Um, and the thing is, I I've just these bottles uh, at my local store they're about eleven twelve dollars. Um, I, I suspect if you're not, you know, on the west coast, they probably go up to more like thirteen or fourteen. Uh, this is not a move, but good try. Uh, this is just, <laughs> stone just dies, um, but. I've introduced this particular sake to a lot of people, and both people who've had sake before and who've never had sake, and the response is always, "Oh, that's really good sake." Uh, <clears throat> and for me, like, 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 especially fresh, freshly opened this bottle, it's a pretty happy experience. I'm still a little bit happier with a few of the other kinds here, um, but but those are more expensive than like 11.50 a bottle. So, oh yeah, that was a really important move. That was that's that's like. <laughs> He could have he needed to play that a lot sooner. <laughs> so I'm gonna say, I can just play here, right? Totally. Um, so that'll really settle that. So, and then we just come back here and we kill this, and then we've killed over well over half the board, and our job here is done. Um, <clears throat> again, this is a Jinmai Ginjo, so again, nicer quality, pure rice style kind of sake. Um, highly recommend it for, for the bang for the buck if you're in the U.S. 
if you're going to import something from Japan, um, like the same company that made this, uh, the Hakutsuru, may also makes the same, you know, s style of um, Junmai Ginjo. I th this was the, the American one was probably modeled after that one in particular one. In fact, mm. just play there and not think about it. Um, but that one is also going to cost you like four dollars more. Or um, and there are other companies too, but they're going to be slightly less quality. So you know. Uh, oh, this is really dangerous. I don't think he's thought this through. All right, here we go. More sake. We're, as this game is getting approaching to the end, uh, we have... Hey, look at this. We've had a couple here that haven't been Junmai's, uh, technically, right? Like, we have the, the draft, and uh, I'm skeptical as to what this thing's going to be, even though it says Daiginjo. Um, it does not say Junmai, <laughs> which is weird, but... Um, possible uh i guess i don't need to play anything over here he finally responded Nine, as he should so uh eight, looks like we just play here and five, four, call it good yeah this is a honjoso sake and so this is not a junmai and i think the term honjoso is another reserved japanese term that means they can use up to 10 percent basically a brewer's alcohol and for many people, that means, oh, this is sake watered down with cheaper alcohol. And there are sakes, haha, <laughs> Hazeki one cups, <laughs> that are watered down with alcohol for a price, but there's also been this long tradition, again, like I always said, most of sake making is in the hand of the maker, as an actual artistic, I mean artistic, what do you call it? I don't know, uh, uh, aesthetic decision? Um, uh, hedonistic decision? I don't know. Um, actually adding alcohol to actually change the character of your sake. And a lot of Hanjozos actually are smoother or even less sake-y than actual sakes. Like they're almost more like if you if you drink beer, like think of like a session beer versus having a... Um, is this a ko? I think I made ko. Whoops. No, it's uh, seki. Crap. Or co. Yeah. Yeah, co. Uh, some Hanjozos, you know, you can think of more like, you know, again, having a session beer where it's not really going to necessarily give you like a, like a bouquet of fairy magic water as much as it is just going to be easily smooth and drinkable. Um, partially because of the interactions between that brewer's alcohol and uh, the rice itself. If you are looking at bottles of Hanjozo, first of all, they can be hard to find. If you go to like, you might have a better shot at finding Hanjozo sakes like in actual Asian stores. Because um, again, for whatever reason, the American English palette, uh, we're trying to kill stuff. Oh, he's playing Ko. That's what he's doing. I can play Ko. You can play Ko too. Let's all play Ko. Um, again, tends to favor these Junmais. <clears throat> and again, I Jinmai like Jinmai Ginjo is like my 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 starting place. Like that's that's my default thing that I want to drink. Um, but you can also get Hanjozos that are have the higher quality rice, and they they sometimes call them Ginjos, but it's more often they'll call them some like Tokubetsus. And so we see that word Tokubetsu. I think it sort of translates as special or something like special. Um, and so I I haven't read the bottle. I, I yeah. So here it says milling sixty percent. Um, so if I see tobe, Tokubetsu Hanjozo, that would imply to me it's like a Ginjo quality, a Ginjo level uh, sake that has a little bit of extra alcohol added in to smooth it out. That's what you're getting. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm playing Ko. Nine, right. Eight. So we just poke. Um, <clears throat> so I haven't had this brand before. I, I just bought this kind of on a whim and I'm very excited for this one as well. But you know, I like you know, I can't drink every night. That's kind of a problem I have. <laughs> I have to take coal. Uh So, oh goddamn, co going on. <laughs> All right, internet. Where's my co threat? I've killed too many things here. I guess so. This is not. That is a co threat. Honey is just a co threat. Not sure it's actually the best co threat, but it is a threat. <laughs> so we'll just play it. Anything over here? Oh, this one, this cut is a threat. That's pretty good. All right, so I got that one there too. Uh, so that was a lot of sake. Oh, I'm, I'm supposed to be drinking during this game. I, I really expected to drink a lot more while playing this game. Goodbye. I'm supposed to say that before you drink. Uh, 
Uh, he has some local threats left, sort of. Ooh, there, he can start a co for this group. Um, I like all my groups. Uh, Does this work? No, let's not play that. Let's cut here. Let's finish this one. Take Co. That's what I'm doing. Right. Co. We should finish this bottle because it's almost empty. And the best part about finishing a bottle of sake is that means you get to open another bottle of sake. And again, I do like the fresh bottles. Problem is when you're drinking alone a lot. <laughs> You know, you don't get to, uh, it's hard to finish a bottle by yourself, like in a one sitting. Not a usual habit. I try to, I try to make. Um, I guess that's a co-threat. So let's play it. He actually has more threats in here, right? Oh, it takes two moves from McKnight, but... Yeah, there's, there's some things, yep. Yeah. But that is a bad threat. Huh? Oh, no, it's not. He just gives me more threats. That's fine. He can give me more threats. Okay. Did I forget to take the co there? I wasn't really paying attention. I feel like there was a co. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yep. Let's, that's not even that big of a threat. He should just probably finish this. Oh, no, we're going to keep going. Not going to give me five stones. I just wanted your five stones, little dude. I am kind of out of threats, though. This is kind of bad. I think this one's actually... This one actually is a threat. Yeah, I don't know what I was saying before. Totally a threat. Um, I'm not even looking and making sure he's taking the co. If he if he plays if I if he makes a co threat and then plays anywhere else on the board, uh, I could have just lost this game twice over. <laughs> I definitely have not been doing that. Hmm. Yeah, I think my question now to myself is what sake do I, which sake do I open next? Maybe, maybe, maybe the internet needs to comment. You can go back through the list. Nine, which sake eight, should Nick drink seven, next? Six, five, um, four, I mean, I can, I can tell you, I see, two, oh, he's reading it out. Right. One, oh, zero, we have like, two overtimes left. we have multiple Buyomis. This is crazy. Um, I won't, I won't color it with which one I should drink next, but, uh, yes. That, that would be a good thing for the internet to comment on. Of course, by the time I read the comments, or by, by, let me put this, by the time there's enough comments that have accumulated for it to be like an actual uh, thing, I've probably already opened the next bottle of sake, so. Oh, see that, but see that could be a thing. Oh, he's just gonna take this. This doesn't work, right? Oh, totally, no, it doesn't work. He, oh, oh no, no, no. Okay, let's just play here. Um. Of course, then I can just take a shot in the dark, open the bottle of sake, and just hope that you guys pick the same bottle that I want to drink next. Eh? I could do that. Alright, this game is super over. We have a dead group, we have a giant dead group, we have another dead group, and we have another four dead stones. Nine, eight, uh, which is pretty good considering I've been drinking sake and not really paying attention to what's going on here. I feel like if you were watching this game for Go information, I have so woefully failed you. Um, hey, look at that. And I've said it before. If that's your, if that's a problem for you, go watch Dwyrin. <laughs> he tends to stay on topic a lot better. Uh, he got out of there. I'm fine. So yeah, this, this, is there uh how do you get to the review? Oh, I'm in the review. Okay. Oh, I have to estimate? No, I'm in the review. Nope, no. Preview? No. Oh, estimate? No, I don't wanna. All right, well, whatever. 
Anyway, here, we'll, we'll try to recap a few highlights from this game for your actual Go benefit. Um, so here, this opening is okay. Uh, again, I still kind of feel like I should just play this one. Um, expect him to play something like that, maybe play over here. And this would be fine. Like, um, White's even maybe slightly happier just because all the black stones are on one side of the board. The black has sente, so this would be fair, right? This would be just kind of expected. So I played this one. And when he comes down, yeah, and I play this move. Um, at this point, he can't kill me. Uh, this 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 black has a lot of thickness, but it really hasn't gained much yet. So I got to eat a few points in the corner and got a little bit on the outside. So I don't know. I was I was, I was feeling happy here. <laughs> not not much to think about actually. Uh, I probably should have attacked the stone a little more directly. Um, this this seemed very premature though, because um, if we look at this. What I ended up getting was this completely solidified on both sides. And now this whole half of the board is just a sea of white. Just just a really sad result. I think what he should have done uh, is just take the stone here, just give up the corner. And this formation really, it does work with this stone. Um, and now I can play here. And so even though white gets a very solid left upper left-hand corner, this Ponuki with this extension uh, and then black and throwing here can really just ruin the rest of white's potential. And if it just comes down to the upper left versus black's right, black is winning. Um, so I think this would be this would be a way for white to throw the game essentially, or for black to overcome it. Um, but yeah, black just cowered in the corner and just lived this very small group. He just got very attached to that. And now you gotta gotta throw it away because again, living here is gonna be gote. That's really painful. <clears throat> really painful. So you got to be flexible. I think that's that's the thing he was not with his stones. And now here he gets flexible. He's like, I'm not going to commit to this. I'm going to jump faster instead of just standing. Uh, sure. I mean, that's that's a thing. Um, but even if this lives, and I, let's say white collects 20 points here, there's still 40 points in the bottom here for white. If, if black just runs out and white just makes a wall, um, right, from actually it's more than, it's more like probably closer to 50 points. Um even if black gets the reductions over here and over here, right? Like, uh, that's, that's, you got, so you already got, a, you're, you're basically between that, Comey, the top and the left over here, white already has an 80 point game going. Can black turn the upper right into 80 points? Uh, I mean, possible, but white's just gonna play two moves in there and, it's, and half of it's gonna go away. All these moves, these, this is a way to make a group heavy and just solidify your points for your opponent. Really bad idea. I was very, this made the game, this, I was like, okay, these points are now just mine. Um, you know, white just has solidly 20 points. Okay. And if I play one more move, that goes up to 40 points. So not hard. We're just keeping the group weak. <clears throat> this move is slow. I, I don't think I should play that, but... Again, I mainly wanted to focus on talking about sake. The thing I was kind of frightened of, let's say I attack this way and he gets this move here and then maybe he attaches and I don't know, maybe he can play something more aggressive here to reduce this wall making eye space. And you know, it's still fine for me. Like this isn't really, this isn't a bad deal whatsoever. Um, but you know, when I just play here, he's gonna poke and this, oh, yeah. I think I sh probably shouldn't pull up this way first. Um, I think for me just to jump out is fine. If he comes there, I can come there. And this group is still weak. There's still a hole here. Um, this is simpler. I'm not. Maybe it's not better, but it's definitely simpler. Oh man, I did not expect this diagonal move. I really did not think he would do that. That was a big truck. Oh, plus I have sake left. So, yep, and we fought over this a little bit. I think this move was really good. <laughs> I know that's a weird thing to say, um, but this is this is one of those moves that I think I would have missed a couple of years ago. 
um, I know it looks really obvious, right? Like like to Q players, but I think for Don players, right? We often we, this is a this this is a really bad exchange. You usually don't want to make. Um, but it's also really important here. Black doesn't connect, and if I just descend, this doesn't have the same effect over here, right? Black isn't going to feel compelled to respond to that directly. Black will go and try something else, or maybe even play this. Um, so the fact that I got to play this diagonal move and I got this response, uh, that's 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 making me feel pretty good. <laughs> I still have Sente. I can play over here, which I did, and get all the shape I needed. Um, and again, in here I was I was a little bit worried. I was like, oh, Black has something going. Like I have a weak group. I didn't anticipate having a weak group in a sandbagger game. Uh, but it turns out uh, my group really isn't that weak. Like it has a million liberties right here and I space to make for it. And uh, after this turn, um, granted, I, 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 I'm, I'm not quite, I'm, I'm like one and a half eyes, <laughs> like I'm close to guaranteed two eyes. Let me show you what I mean. Like if I play here, there's an eye here and there's an eye here. If black pokes out this one. <clears throat> um, there, this move is Sente. How is this actually? This is, uh, is that how we do this? No, that's not an eye either. Sorry, not an eye. Yep, that's not an eye because of this throw in. There you go. So not an eye down there, but it's real close. And um, actually, if black plays there, white has this move. And then if white has that move, then white also has this move. Um, so if white has that move now, white has two eyes. There we go. That's better. <laughs> uh, so yeah, for black to poke out both eyes, it's, it's, I mean, black has to kind of pay for poking out the eyes here and white will just run and find another eye somewhere. So it's, it's dangerous and is in the back of my mind. Um, this turned out to be just fine for me. I know it looks like I just killed off two stones, but I really wasn't unhappy with it. I did give up. I did. I did give up some things in the corner though. Like maybe here later. Um, this is kind of a nice sequence, right? Black, if black comes through, yeah. Then we get into this running sort of thing. I don't know. I had, a, I had a lot there. I just I just used the Aji very bluntly with this cut and extension, and he had to back off. Um, and so here, yeah, he's just he's just got these three stones. That uh, I think this I think he need, I think the better move is just play here, kill off the Aji as cleanly as possible, and you know White will either make shape or fight dangerously. Fight dangerously seems dangerous. <laughs> And again, I was talking about sake, so I wasn't really interested in fighting dangerously. Uh, but anyway, if we go back to the game, after these exchanges, uh, we've got a black group behind enemy lines, we've got a, another black group behind enemy lines, <clears throat> and this white weak group, as I've sh sort of shown you, between this area, this area, and this area, not going to be, like, it has, it has an eye, like one big eye, and two more half eyes. So that's pretty alive. Black tries something, bless his heart. But yeah, this is just, he's just got nowhere for this group to go. This is trapped in between um, the two white things. So anyway, I don't, I don't think that was super exciting of a game. Uh, the sake was probably the highlight of the game for sure. So that's why we're calling it the sake game. Uh, if you liked this style of video, I can do more. Um, there's a lot of things I'm kind of passionate about that are not go. And I don't usually often talk about on this channel. Um, but there is a list of them. We could, we could, we could do quite a few videos like this. So, I, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. See you later.